And now, another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. The story, Leiningen versus the Ant, begins in a minute. Winston gives you real flavor for it. Tobacco flavor, Winston's easy drawing to the flavor comes right through to you. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. A modern filter? Sure, Winston has it. But that's only the beginning of a Winston. Up front, up where it really counts, Winston packs exclusive filter blend. Light, flavorful tobaccos, specially selected and specially processed for filter smoking. Filter blend. That's why it's fun to smoke Winston, America's best-selling filter cigarette. Winston tastes good like a cigarette I first met Leiningen while performing my duty as commissioner of the Toto Santo district along the upper reaches of the Santissima River. As my boat neared its plantation landing, I saw him upon the riverbank regarding me with mild interest. A great hulk of a man with bristling gray hair, bulky nose, and lucid eyes. His entire appearance somehow suggested an aging and shabby eagle. I came quickly to the point of my visit and issued my warning. Leiningen puffed placidly at a huge cigar and seemed unimpressed. Decent of you paddling all this way just to give me the tip, Commissioner. But even a herd of crocodiles couldn't frighten me from my plantation. No, 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 you don't understand. These aren't creatures you can fight. These are army ants. They're an elemental force. A gigantic catastrophe, an act of God. Ten miles long, two miles wide. Ants, nothing but ants. And each one as big as your thumb. They can strip a man's body to a skeleton in six minutes. I'm not an old woman, Commissioner. I tell you, Leiningen, you don't know these ads. But he sat there puffing at a cigar and regarded me with a grin, and I knew it was hopeless. As I boarded my launch and cast off, I felt a sudden resentment toward this obstinate old man. Yet with it was something else. I'd never met a man like him before. I could think of only one thing. One man, Leiningen. One man who calmly evaluated his chances against the deadly menace, coolly decided he could win, and was willing to stake his life on it, to risk a horrible death for it. It was terrifying. And yet it was fascinating. And when dawn came, I knew that the fascination of that man was more than I could resist. That Leiningen's fight was drawing my mind, drawing me back toward that plantation and death. And there was nothing I could do about it. I had to go back. It was 10 o'clock in the morning when I rounded the bend below Leiningen's plantation. I put in at the dock and tied up the launch. Then I saw him standing on the bank above me, Arms folded, stubby cigar in his mouth, and a sardonic grin on his face. Back for another warning, Commissioner? No. Well, back to stay a while. Yes. Uh-huh. You, uh, you don't seem very surprised. I am not. You expected me? I thought you'd be back. Uh, come along, we'll get some horses. You'll want to ride around the plantation, take a look at the defenses I've rigged up. Defenses? Oh, have you had time? I've but... always known that sooner or later the ants would come. Oh. Well, yes, I'd like to see the defenses. And the ants. We'll be getting a glimpse of them before long, I should think. Yes, and the ants. The defenses lining and the devised were quite impressive. Surrounding three sides of the plantation, like a huge horseshoe, was a ditch 12 feet wide. The end of this ditch ran into the river, which formed the fourth side of the plantation. And at the upriver entrance to the ditch, Leiningen had constructed a dam by which river water could be diverted. A large
large hand wheel controlled the floodgate of the dam. We approached the ditch and rode along it. I could see it was nearly full. How do you like my first line of defense, Commissioner? It's uh, reassuring, like a moat around a castle. Unless the ants know how to build rafts, they won't reach the plantation. But this is only the outer moat. There's a better one than this. Uh, come along. We'll go up to the high ground where the buildings are. We can get a few uh, from mining there. Them. Yes? I didn't see any women or children around the plantation or any animals. That's right. Move them across the river. And even you think there's danger, eh? Not because of danger, Commissioner. It's a matter of efficiency. Efficiency? Cuts down on the efficiency of the men if they're worried about their families. Critical situations only become crises when oxen and women get excited. Oh, here we are. Oh. Uh, this ditch. It's much smaller than the other. Now, you've noticed how all the buildings are on this high piece of ground here. This inner ditch surrounds them, and it's lined with concrete. It's even filled with water. This is no barrier. It's not big enough. Why, if the ants got this far... They'll out. get no farther. This ditch wasn't built for water, Commissioner. See the pipes leading into it? See those storage tanks up on the hill? Gasoline. We can throw up a wall of flame. Care to bet they won't like that? <laughs> I dare say they won't. Hey, uh, look, Commissioner. Over there on the horizon. There are your ants. Look at them. It was a sight I'll never forget. Over the range of hills, as far as I could see, crept a darkening hem, ever longer and broader, until the shadows spread across the entire slope. Then downward, downward, uncannily swift. And all the grass and bushes on the entire slope were being mown as by a giant sickle, leaving only the vast, moving shadow. Ending, deepening, and moving rapidly near. They're a hideous lot. Mining him. We can't last against that. Look at them. But they can fill you in pictures with their corpses and still have enough to destroy every one of them. We've got to run for it. Oh, they haven't gotten to us yet, and they never will. Come along. We'd best get back to the men. The hostile army was approaching in perfect formation. Along a front that moved forward as uniformly as a straight line, the ants drew nearer and nearer to the water ditch. Across the scant 12 feet of the ditch, I stared at them, and they seemed to stare back at me. Around four in the afternoon, the ant scouts, having found no crossing, there was a stirring among the main army. And then, an immense flood of ants, about a hundred yards in width, commenced pouring in a glimmering black cataract down the far slope of the ditch. Thousands drowned instantly. The rest began using the bodies as bridges. Mining can immediately swung into action. Mario, si, senor. Get to the dam over the floodgate wider. Get the water in the ditch moving faster. Si, senor. Look at them drowned by the thousands. But they keep coming. Even though the current carries many of them away, they're advancing. We'll take some blocks. Senor, how about those shovels and petrol sprinklers? You pass them on to the men? It is being done. Then get all hands here in a hurry. This looks like the spot for action. All right, then. Busy with the shuttles now. Dump some sand and cloths on them. See how they like that. Go with the petrol sprinklers. Start pumping. Ah, they don't like it, Commissioner. They don't like it a bit. Look at them. Yes, but how about the ones on the far side of the ditch? Whole clumps of them rolling into the water. The rest are using them for bridges. That's keeping the mice. He should be at the dam by now. Senor! The ants are crossing the ditch on clouds of earth. A few clouds up this side even now. I see them. Use your shovels on them, men. Clap the crawlers! <laughs> What's the matter? Into the pit, what you idiot! Those your paws in the battle! Don't stop now, the rest of you! Club them! We can't hold them back, senor! We must go! You run now, you're doomed, every one of you! You've got to fight them back! Use your shovel! You're dead if you stop! So keep at it! Keep at it! Ah! And now you've got the floodgate open, the water's moving faster! Ah, look at the ants. They can't hold their own against the current now. They're being washed away. Look at them, Commissioner. We beat them. We've won. It was true. My 
Flanagan had won at least the first round. The floodgates were left open to forestall any night crossing. I allowed myself to hope that the ants would go on, pass us by. But when dawn came, the dark blanket was still there, motionless across the ditch. Then we noticed a feverish activity on the other side of the plantation. Here, a grove of tamarind trees lined the far end of the ditch, and every tree swarmed with the crawling insects. Instead of eating the leaves, they were merely gnawing through the stems so that a thick green shower fell steadily to the ground. Well, it looks as if it's feeding time for our friends, eh? Plus, yep. have all the petrol pumps across here and get everyone over here except the lookout on the other side. Then pass out the shovel. You're going to deprive them of a meal? Meal? Aren't they cutting down the leaves for food? I wish they were. What do you mean? I said if they wanted to get across, they'd have to have wrath. And that's just what they've got. Those leaves are the wrap. Even as he spoke, the leaves went tumbling down the far bank by the thousands. The current drew them away from the bank, and each leaf carried several ants. Don't worry. As long as you keep spraying them and shoveling dirt on their rafts, they can't land. But there will be too many. It's true. Look, more leaves in the ditch all the time. Or they'll have a solid carpet to walk across in a minute. Not so fast, Commissioner. I've still got a trick up my sleeve for them. The water! The ditch is drying up. Of course it's drying up. That's the plan. Those are the orders I sent to the dam. Are you mad? As soon as it's empty, what's to prevent the answer? Look, the water's way down. It's almost dry. They'll be able to come across the bottom. They'll not make it if the man at the dam carries out his orders. He should have opened the gates again by now. What, to flood the ant? Right. What a chance to take if anything should happen. Ah, there comes the water. Now we'll give the crawlers in the ditch a good ride. Out into the river. There. Look at them go. Mining and tactics were successful at first. The violent flow of water raced through the ditch, overwhelming leaves and ants, and sweeping them along. Three times the ditch was emptied, three times the ants raced across the bottom, and three times the water arriving just in time carried them away. But the fourth time, as the water lowered nearly to the bottom of the ditch, we waited in vain for the running water. And then... What's the matter? What's gone wrong at the dam? The ants? It's just as the man at the dam will lower the water almost at the bottom. The ants attack the dam. Before he could open the floodgate, he was almost surrounded. He ran. The ants kept coming. They are across the deep. Linington stood motionless, absorbing the news of his defeat without a word. Then he raised his pistol and fired three shots into the air. The prearranged signal for all the men to retreat instantly to the second line of defense. The concrete line ditches two miles from the point of invasion. Soon after we arrived there, the natives commenced straggling in silently. Leiningen waited until all of them had gathered, and then he spoke to them. Well, lads, we won the first round and lost the second. But we'll smash the crawlers yet. For the moment, we're safe. than a nasty cold. To feel better quickly, I take wonderful four-way cold tablets, the fast way to relieve cold distress. Right. Tests of all the leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting. Four-way starts in minutes to relieve muscular pains, headache, reduce fever, calm upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. Take my advice. For your next cold, take four-way cold tablets, the fast way to relieve those cold miseries. Four-way, only 29 cents. Our program will continue in a moment after a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. Does dandruff dull your hair, leave scalp itchy? 
Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo and get rid of unsightly dandruff in three minutes. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair. Rub in one minute. Add water. Lather one minute. Rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch. Unsightly dandruff gone. Fitch can also leave your hair up to 35% brighter. Fitch. Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Well, we were safe for the moment. The next morning, the black swarm was solid around us. And their shock troops were hard at work. They were dropping shreds of bark and twigs and leaves into the petrol-filled ditches, forming a floating bridge across the surface of the liquid. Lannington stood silently watching this operation, and I could see a grudging admiration in his face. And then after several hours, the attack came. Down the ditch they poured, thousands of them, and across the bridge of twigs, rapidly approaching the inner side. Lannington sat motionless watching them. Lannington, for the love of God, don't just sit there like a statue. They'll be on us in a moment. That's some pivot first. Now, all right, everyone back from the ditch. First, hand me the torch. Now we'll see how our friends like a little heat around them. enough to fill the ditch once more. And then... Ah! Ikuru, come back! You ah! stop the ditch. He'll never make it to the river. Ikuru, come back! Merciful God, he's... Too late. Russ, keep the men back with your guns. Don't let anyone else try for the river. Flanagan, isn't there any way? Any way at all? we got to do something. There we just have... your way. There must be. Yes. Yes. What is this? What is this? We'll flood the whole plantation. Flood, huh? We've got to close the floodgate at the dam. That'll do it. Well, you're mad. The dam's nearly two miles away. Two miles of ash. Pat, listen to me. Now, listen. I'm proud of you. Now, there's still a chance. By shutting the floodgates in the dam and flooding the whole plantation from the river. The moment I'm over the ditch, set fire to it. That'll allow time for the flood to wash away the ants. Then all you have to do is wait for me. It's impossible. You can't get to the dam, let alone get back. That's where you're wrong, Commissioner. I'll get there, and I'll be back. Take care of things while I'm gone, huh? I watched him as he calmly pulled on high leather boots, drew gauntlets over his hands, and stuffed the spaces between breeches and boots, gauntlets and arms with petrol-soaked rags. He shielded his eyes with close-fitting mosquito goggles and plugged his nostrils and ears with cotton. Then the natives drenched his clothes with petrol. Leiningen was ready. And as he stood calmly surveying the course he must take to the dam, I was near the ditch ready for the run, I realized this was as it should be. I, Leiningen, would meet the ants and defeat them or be defeated by them. Leiningen versus the ants. I ran ran in long, equal strides with one thought, one sensation in my being. I must get through. I dodged all trees and shrubs, except for the split seconds when my soul touched the ground, the ants would have no opportunity to alight on me. I ran off. I was halfway to the dam before I felt ants under my clothes with few on my face. I just struck at them, mechanically, scarcely conscious of their bite. The dam drew toward me slowly, the distance grew less, less. Finally, only a hundred yards away, fifty, and then I was there. I gripped the ant-covered wheel. 
hardly had I seized it when a horde of ants flowed over my hands and my arms. I strained. Slowly the wheel turned and turned more. The floodgates were swinging slowly shut. And then it was shut. And the water was rising, rising behind the breakwater, closer to the top, closer. And then it was spilling over. The flooding of the plantation had begun. And it drove the wheel. For the first time I realized I was coated from head to foot with a fiend. Stones of fire stabbed me when they fit into my flesh. Then I could see dimly that wall of flame at the ditch. It was too far away. I could not last half that distance. I, I stumbled. I fell. I felt myself being swarmed over, devoured. I tried to rise. Great weight. And then I remembered. Six minutes. Then nothing but bones. I, I, I couldn't let that happen to me. I couldn't die like that. My feet. My feet dragged myself forward. Or the flame. The ditch. The ring of flame. Closer now. Only a little farther. And we have waited for hours when all at once through the blazing ring around us, an apparition hurtled and fell full length on the ground. Leiningen, alive with ants, unconscious, with glazing eyes and lacerated face. We rushed to him, stripped off his clothes and tore at the ants that covered him. His body seemed almost one open wound. In one place I could see the white of a bone. Later... As the curtain of flame lowered, I looked out where the blanket of ants had been and saw only a vast expanse of water covering the entire plantation. The ants were gone, drowned, and Leiningen had won. He lay on his bed, his body swathed from head to foot with bandages, but Leiningen was still alive. Everything in order. They're gone. The ants are gone. I told you that I'd come back, even if I am a, a bit streamlined. And then this aging man grinned, shut his eyes, and quietly fell asleep. to Leiningen and the Ants, a story by Carl Stevenson, written for Suspense by Robert Ritt. In a moment, the names of our players and a word about next week's story of Suspense. Out of tune because of irregularity? Kellogg's All Brand helps put you back in tune. Kellogg's All Bran is the natural way, the good food way to end constipation caused by lack of bulk in your diet. There's only one All Bran, Kellogg's All Bran. Its whole bran content gentles away constipation, supplies your system with the bulk-forming food you need. Kellogg's All Bran is the only whole bran cereal to bring you the combination of proved effectiveness, appetizing taste, and crispness. It never gets mushy in milk. So get back in tune and stay in tune. It's easy with the one and only Kellogg's All Brand. A double L hyphen B R A N. Safe, reliable, pleasant. Millions enjoy it every day. They know they can count on Kellogg's All Brand to relieve irregularity. <laughs> Van Ruten as Leiningen and Martin Blaine as the commissioner. Also included in the cast were Ralph Camargo, Ronald Dawson, and Sam Raskin.
listen again next week when we return with an explosive story written by Peter Fernandez. The Dynamite Run. Another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. On CBS Radio.